Emmanuel, God is with us. Thanks be to God. I welcome each of you to this time of Christmas Eve worship and celebration through Oak Grove United Methodist Church on this Christmas Eve night. I want to go ahead and tell you now to go find a candle. Um, wherever you are, if it's safe for you to do so, especially if you're at home, um, toward the end of our worship time, we will sing Silent Night and light a candle together. So I invite you to find a candle in your home. doesn't matter what it looks like. If you don't have a candle, then maybe a flashlight, or you could use the light on your phone for us to hold up together, even though we are... Um, in different places, we will illumine wherever we are with the light of Christ. So get ready for that. And as we get started with worship, we will begin with prayer. Loving God, with joy and thanksgiving, we celebrate tonight the birth of Jesus. We have come again to hear this timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of this night, quiet our hearts so that we may know the peace and the fullness of this holy time. May we be filled with your spirit so that your light can shine through us in the darkness of this world. May we give thanks knowing that God is truly with us. Emmanuel. And we are not alone. Lord, open our minds and hearts that we may hear and rejoice in the gospel of our Savior's birth, told in story and song this night. Amen. I invite you now to turn your attention toward our Advent wreath as the Dickerson family leads our reading and candle lighting. Advent hope moves us. Advent love moves leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us, that we might affirm our King Jesus. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and our total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled, our love is consummated, our joy is complete, and our peace is sealed. We rejoice, Jesus is born, joy to the world. i 
And hear now this reading from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. The glory is of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cernius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him at the inn.
in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy to all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those who favors him. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard and seen as it had been told to them.
you came like a winter snow Quiet, you were soft and slow Falling from the sky in the night to the earth below Hear now this reading from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have, you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as a people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, the other day, my sweet little six-year-old, Kara, was playing in the playroom, and the lights were really dim in the room. She turned the light switch on, and I think one of the light bulbs was out in the light fixture, and she needed more light. So she opened the curtain in the playroom, and it was in the morning, and to her amazement, bright light, sunlight, came in that window. And she was amazed. And she said, wow, this is the kind of light that we need in the whole house all the time. So let's open all the curtains and let this kind of light in. And I just kind of thought to myself, amen, girl. Let's let the light in. Let's welcome the light. Now, lately, we have used the metaphor or this advent of getting a house ready for company to come. And we've acknowledged that this place is a mess. And we've cleaned up and we've decorated and we have waited on the threshold. And on this Christmas Eve, finally, we get to welcome the guest, the Christ who is born. 
the light of the world who has come in. Now, this passage from Isaiah is one that welcomes a new king coming into the world. It's written in the style of an ancient royal birth announcement or a song of a king who will come to lift the burdens of the people from their shoulders. And this message through the prophet came to the people of Israel at a time when they were walking in great darkness. Their leaders and their kings had led them astray to worship false gods and such. And the people had been surrounded by war and violence and the threat of being conquered and taken away into exile. But the prophet says that a new light has dawned. He declares that there would be a time when peace would reign, when war would be over. A time when a new king would come. And new kings did come. Hezekiah and Josiah both came later and ruled the people faithfully. And as Christians, when we hear this passage, we hear it as one that tells of Jesus, of the King Jesus, the Messiah, to come. And this Christmas, we celebrate that Christ is born, that that light that he brings has come into the world and come into our lives Christ has come to illuminate the darkness of this world. Now, darkness looks different for each of us. You know, perhaps the darkness that you've experienced lately is that of sickness or grief, suffering. Maybe your darkness is consequences of some bad choices. Or perhaps it's regrets of the past or worries about the future. Whatever the darkness is for you, the good news is that Christ has come to bring light. As we read from John, in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. That means that the light of Christ shines in your life regardless of whatever it is that you face. No darkness can overcome it. So no matter how dark the darkness seems, the light of God's goodness and grace continues to shine. The darkness doesn't go away, but the light shines into it and through it. We have recently, this week, experienced the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, darkest night of the year, Yet on that night, some planets aligned and provided a bright light in the sky. It gets dark earlier and earlier at night these days. And not only have things been physically dark, they've been a little spiritually heavy for us too. And we're in a time where God may seem a little distant, silent maybe. Things might not feel very Christmassy. And things do look different, and things are different. But the good news is that the message of Christmas is the same. The story is the same. The gospel is the same. Even though things may look and feel different, the Savior is the same. The same baby was born, is born, wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, is the same Emmanuel, God, with us. He was with us yesterday, who is with us today, and who will be with us forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sweet little Jesus born we made you be born in a manger sweet little holy child didn't know who you was 
Didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes was blind, we couldn't see. We didn't know who you was. Long time ago, you was born, born in a manger low, sweet little Jesus boy. The world treats you mean, Lord, treat me mean too. But that's how things is down here. We don't know who you is. You done showed us how we is a trying. Master, you done showed us how even when you died, just seem like we can't do right. Look how we treated you. But please, sir, forgive us, Lord. We didn't know it was you. Sweet little Jesus boy, born a long time ago. Sweet little holy child, and we didn't know who you was. Merry Christmas, boys and girls, and everyone. We're so glad that you're here celebrating the birth of Jesus with us tonight. I hope all of you had a good time baking your cakes and having your birthday party for Jesus. And now, as you get ready, you're full of excitement waiting for Santa to come. Have you ever wondered how Santa became such a special part of the story of Christmas? Well, I found a poem. I'm not sure who wrote it. it is, Arthur is unknown. But it's called, To Remind the World of the Love Jesus Gave. I want to share that with you tonight so you can think about it as you go to sleep. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And on goes the story about Christmas Eve and the jolly old man in whom we believe. Have you ever wondered how Santa came to be so important to Christmas and to you and to me? Well, it all began a long time ago, the night before Christ to earth was to go. All prepared to make Christ's birth well announced, with angels and music and anthems pronounced. But alas, all had forgotten in the final rush how to make Christ's birthday remembered to us. The kingdom was searched for the most excellent plan that would help us remember God's gift to man. A saintly old fellow, so jolly and gay, came up with the best plan that was offered that day. He said, send a fellow each year at this time who would help people be happy and comfort their minds. He would help man remember that God loves us so 
by bringing presents to both friend and foe. He would show by example that true love and joy come only when shared with each girl and each boy. Heaven decided that Santa's plan would be just right, and Santa was asked to play the part that very first night. So from the first Christmas right down to today, when one heard the bells jingling and saw the big sleigh, they knew it was Santa making his way to remind the world of the love Jesus gave. So this night before Christmas, when you hear Santa come, remember he's doing it for the love of God's Son. Remember that he teaches, as did Christ of old, that to give of oneself is more precious than gold. prepare to sing Silent Night, I invite you to find your light, whether it be a candle or your flashlight or whatever you've got near you. Find your light and share the light of Christ just with yourself or with those around you or to whomever and however. And when we're done here, you're invited to share that light of Christ and carry it with you wherever you go. receive this benediction. The light of Christ, our guest, the Christ child, has come. So let us go now and let that light shine into all the world. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Merry Christmas from Oak Grove United Methodist Church. <laughs>